Good evening, everyone. We will call the May 20, 2013 City Council meeting to order. First order of business is the roll call. Sasso? Here. Clayton? Here. Nordstrom? Here. Scott? Here. Peterson? Here. Doyle? Here. Lewis? Here. Roberts? Here. Wright? Here. Laurenti? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. And now we'll proceed with our invocation and we'll recognize Pastor Julie Nor Norwood and you're welcome uh, to participate, not required to attend. Father, thank you for the privilege of gathering in this place tonight. Lord, we come with you to you with humble hearts, knowing the responsibility of the call of being a public leader and a servant to the people. Father, I pray as we gather in this place that the agenda would be according to your timing and your will. Father, I thank you for those that I stand with tonight that serve our community from the youngest to the oldest. God, may your will be done in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The United States of America and the free republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Julie. And thank you, Kendall, for coming also. We will now proceed with the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? Any additions or changes? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved, second. We have a motion by Clayton and a second by Scott. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. The agenda has been adopted. We'll, there, there will, by the way, be no item number two tonight. There will be no employee awards. We will now proceed with Veteran of the Month. If Staff Sergeant Mark Bush could come down front along with our Ward 2 Council members. Sir, we want to take a moment to thank you for your service uh, to our nation and in partnership with the Veterans Coordination Commission, we are pleased to present the May 2013 Veteran of the Month recognition to Staff Sergeant Mark Bush. Sergeant Bush enlisted in the U.S. Air Force in March 2004 as a Security Forces member. He has been stationed at Air Force Academy, Colorado from 2004 to 2007, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada from 2007 to 2011, Kansan Air Base, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, yep, uh, North Korea from 2011 to 2012, Ellsworth Air Force Base from 2012 to the present. Sergeant Bush has deployed three times to Iraq, first in 2004, then in 2008, and also in 2009. And we go. Oh. Sergeant Bush became a military working dog handler in January 2007. During his time as a handler, Bush has been credited with saving several coalition forces and Iraqi civilian lives in the Jerf Nadaf province of Baghdad, Iraq. His military working dog led to the discovery of 50 pounds of homemade explosives uh, that was attached to a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device and also captured the two insurgents responsible for making the VBIED. Early in his career as a young handler, Sergeant Bush responded to four bomb threats at several schools in the Colorado Springs area to assist civilian law enforcement. Also, while stationed at Nellis Air Force Base, 
He responded to two on-base bomb threats. Sergeant Bush has been a military working dog instructor multiple times for Silver Flag Alpha Regional Training Center at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. During his time as a handler, he has supported multiple United States Secret Service missions for the current President of the United States, President Barack Obama, and the President of Russia, Dmitry Mendyov, Vice President Joe Biden, in combat conditions, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General T. Michael Mosley, Director of the CIA, General Michael Hayden, and the Governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Recently, Sergeant Bush was chosen to be Joint Drug Enforcement Team Investigator with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Staff Sergeant Bush is being chosen for this recognition because of the effort he puts into his career on and off duty. He sets the standards for other NCSs to live up to. He is a star performer. In the time Staff Sergeant Bush has been assigned to Ellsworth since March 2012, he has not only participated in community, act community activities, he's organized them and motiva motivated others to get involved. Staff Sergeant Bush spearheaded a blood drive with United Blood Service, attending over, attaining over 125 donors in two days. He also organized a clothing drive this month that will help clothe 150 homeless individuals in the area. This month, he assisted the Cub Scouts with achieving their wolf badge, badge by facilitating a tour and a briefing of a government facility, which was a, a requirement of the badge. Staff Sergeant Bush planned a dinner for his squadron to aid unit cohesiveness and raised $500 to donate to the Rapid City Police Association for their community fund. He is also currently taking two classes towards his criminal justice degree. Staff Sergeant Bush is always seeking opportunities to better himself and others around him. Having served his country with pride, honor, and integrity, Staff Sergeant Mark Bush is a true patriot of our country the United States Air Force, and his community. He is most deserving a Veteran of the Month. Thank you for your service, Mark. Thank you very much. We now have a very special proclamation for a very special person. If Jerry Schoner could come up, please, along with J.P. Dunapin. And if you could uh, go ahead and dial in, Jim, if you could dial in Don. Don Barnett. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Well, Sam, how are you, sir? Doing great. Councilman Schoner has requested that you be silent until you're spoken to. That's the way it always worked. <laughs> All right. So I would like to take a moment to introduce uh, J.P. Dunapin, and then uh, Mayor Barnett will speak uh, towards the end uh, after the proclamation. Senator uh, Dunapin has been a longtime uh, friend of of Jerry Schoner, and she's a, a fellow conspirator on this particular proclamation, JP. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council and Mayor Barnett. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. I had the uh, pleasure of meeting Jerry Schoner about 30 years ago when I bought the airport restaurant. He was chairman of the airport board. He was tough, but he was fair. And after I signed the contract, he told me, he said, you have to pay special rent. You have to make a commitment to our community to make it a better place to live, to work, and raise a family. He continues that commitment to today, every day. He served on numerous boards, commissions, and charities, many of them as chairman. His leadership around our state is well-known and well-respected. I had the pleasure of serving with him in the South Dakota Legislature. He's a special gentleman. He raised six wonderful children, one of who is here tonight, Colleen, his lovely wife, Terry. I'm honored to call them a friend, and I'm honored that he's a member of our community because he has made it a better place to live, work, raise a family, and a better citizen in a better state of South Dakota. Thank you. And now we have a proclamation. And I will start off and then I will turn it over to Ward 5 Councilmember Ron Sasso, one of uh, Jerry's uh, representatives, and then Council President Bonnie Peterson will finish off the proclamation. Whereas it is right and proper for a city to give special recognition to outstanding citizens, and it is important to celebrate the contributions made by dedicated individuals in shaping our community. Whereas Jerry Schoner served more than 50 years with the Rapid City Journal, rising from a route carrier to vice president and circulation director, and whereas Jerry Schoner, at 17, left high school to honorably serve the U.S. Navy and returned to complete his education, including earning a business degree from National American University, and whereas Jerry Schoner has been a tireless and enthusiastic public servant to Rapid City as a member of the Rapid City Common Council during some of the community's most challenging times, including the 1972 Com uh, flood recovery and uh, Jerry Schoner served four productive terms as a state senator from District 3, 32, 34, sorry. <laughs> and whereas Jerry Schoner has for many years played an integral part in the economic development of all of South Dakota during his many years on the South Dakota Transportation Commission under both Democratic and Republican administrations, and whereas Jerry Schoner has contributed his time and leadership skills to numerous charitable organizations, too numerous to list, including the Black Hills Workshop, and whereas Jerry Schoner has provided our citizens an outstanding example of devotion to family and community, he and his beloved wife Terry have raised six children, all of whom have received college degrees and who in their own rights are productive members of their communities. And now I, Sam Quaker, Mayor of Rapid City and Mayor Barnett, do hereby proclaim Monday, May 20, 2013 as your day, Jerry Schoner Day, in Rapid City and urge all the citizens of Rapid City to join us in recognition of your very special accomplishments. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, you may speak now. Well, thank you, Sam, and to Jerry and Terry, I certainly say good evening from Denver, and uh, this is certainly a historical moment for Rapid City. Uh, th this is more than personal, and it has nothing to do with politics. So when I was a young man in, in Rapid City and lived behind the power plant on West Rapid Street, right below M. Hill, I sold papers on the streets of Rapid City, and we'd buy them from the Journal for four cents, and we'd sell them on the streets for seven cents, and most of the tourists would give us a dime. So we made six cents a paper, and my boss was Jerry Schoner, and I was in about the fifth grade. 
and Jerry and I go back a long time, and I'm also a veteran, but my service is minimal uh, compared to what Jerry did for his country way back in the darkest hours of World War II. Jerry's just a tad older than I am, and he was uh, he was 17, and when he turned uh, when he turned 17, uh, he talked it over with his parents, and they were a little bit dubious. But they agreed and signed the papers, and Jerry volunteered for the Navy. And after training, he found himself in the Japanese theater floating around on a small destroyer. And he served over there for a year and a half, including the occupation of Japan. And, and, and Jerry's never one to brag about this. But he sailed right into Tokyo Bay. And, and it was a tremendously dangerous period of time, and General MacArthur was there, and it was a very, very historic moment. It was the end of the Japanese Empire, and our country had just won the war, and the atomic bombs had been dropped only five or six weeks before. And Jerry Schoner was a little kid from North Rapid, but he was a man, and he was on that boat, and he was so proud to serve his country. And then he was in the occupation forces right there in Tokyo Bay for over a year and did such a wonderful job for his country. And back when I was a young man, the, the principal at uh, Central High School was a man named Haskins. And Mr. Haskins told me years later that one day Jerry Schoner knocked on his door and said, I'm back, now I want to graduate. And I can't think of a higher a statement of citizenship than what Jerry did in, in the 1940s. But it, all, it only got better for Rapid City as, as Jerry got older and and went on to college there at the National College of Business, now American University there, and, and he had such a fine job with the journal and became the senior vice president. Jerry served on the city council for more years than I can imagine, and he also served on a wide, wide variety of chamber of commerce and community activities. Jerry and I and his family were talking a few years ago. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry's years of, of service on commissions and the city council in Rapid City exceed 100 years of active service on various boards and activities that have made Rapid City such a fine city. And his work on the Black Hills Workshop has absolutely been historic. Hundreds and hundreds of young people have benefited so much from the availability of those jobs in the far site and the, the leadership of Jerry and that board, and it makes Rapid City just such a phenomenal city. When I was elected mayor in 1971, Jerry was the veteran member of the council and had served for many, many years, and he knew all the history. I had him in my, in my office many times to help me through the tough moments. That didn't mean that we agreed, but I always knew where Jerry's heart was, and he served with such effectiveness. And Sam, what happened after the flood is sort of a maze in, in our history books, but I tell you, we started dealing with a lot of zeros on the money. And uh, there were millions and millions of dollars of state money and federal money, and Jerry was not the least bit concerned. He understood probably better than anybody in the city where the power of the purse could be used and used honestly and effectively. I just don't know. I don't think the council would have had the uh, confidence to use all of those programs so effectively to make Rapid City what it is today if Jerry would not have been there to personally supervise those many funds and do the calculations He'd come down after work about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and sit down with Wes Richmond, our city finance officer, and they'd go over columns and numbers until they were both absolutely certain that the next program was something we could afford and that we should do. I was so incredibly busy with so much, I would sit in on those meetings and just wonder at how Jerry could be so knowledgeable and so incredibly honest and such a progressive member of our city. And then one day, Governor Knipe called me, and he wanted to meet with me privately, and he needed a, a man from western South Dakota that happened to be a Republican to serve an appointment on the South Dakota Highway Commission. And I could he, he wanted me to give him a, a name of the best man in Rapid City that I could define. And I suggested that, that Jerry serve on the South Dakota Highway Commission, and Governor Knipe knew Jerry already, and he said, I was hoping you'd say that. And from that moment forward, Mr. Mayor, Jerry, Jerry served for seven governors of South Dakota on the South Dakota Board of Transportation. There's never been a man in South Dakota history that gave that many years of service to the highway department and the various components of South Dakota's transportation plan. 
Then he was reelected time and time again to the state Senate. But, Sam, the moment he finished his fourth term on the state Senate, the governor then reappointed him to the Highway Transportation Committee. So Jerry has done more than just about anybody I can name. I don't think it's even a close call in serving Rapid City since World War II. But it's just absolutely wonderful that, that my hometown would take the, this moment here and thank Jerry for his service. I think it's absolutely wonderful. But equally one wonderful is the uh, love affair between Terry and Jerry. I think of the thousands of nights that Terry has been lonely and sat at home and knew full well that Jer Jerry was out working in the community on freedom's business to make it a better city. And we don't have time tonight to read the list of the, uh, the boards and commissions but it's absolutely wonderful that the numerical volumes of years and nights and evenings and weekends and thousands and thousands of meetings that Jerry was involved as he made Rapid City such a very, very fine city. And you know, it was even true last year during the 40th commemoration of the terrible flood. Jerry and Dr. Lytle, the pillars of the city council in the 1970s, that they were there to raise the money and make that, uh, that event so historically important for Rapid City. So, Sam, I join with your wonderful city council and, and with the citizens there tonight to thank Jerry and Terry for their commitment to making Rapid City what it really is today. I'm just so proud of my friendship with Jerry. And to top it off, the South Dakota Hall of Fame this year will induct Jerry Schoner in September as a member of the South Dakota Hall of Fame. I happened to serve on that board, and I will tell you it was a positive, positive vote when we selected Jerry Schoner out of 86 applications to be inducted in the Hall of Fame this year. So, Sam and the council, I want to congratulate you for recognizing this fine man. Jerry and Terry know the way I feel about him. And I thank you so much for inviting me to participate. I think everybody in Rapid City should say a prayer tonight and, 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 and thank God above for the time that Jerry and Terry have given to making Rapid City such a wonderful city. I'd like to be there and shake his hand, but Jerry knows how I feel about him. And, and Jerry also knows that I respect and love Terry so very much. So God bless all of you, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a few words about my pal. Don't don't hang up yet, Mr. Mayor. Are you still there? Yeah. All right. Jerry would like to say a few words. Well, very few, because Don, Mayor Don, you almost said them all. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate uh, you, uh, Mayor Sam, and the City Council. It's just kind of fun to be back again. Uh, I hope that what I've done uh, in the communities in South Dakota, that I've made it a better place to live. And uh, I'd like to thank my family, too. Uh, my, my wife had 62 years. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, I'm very honored, and I thank you very, very much.
Mr. Mayor, are you still there? In a moment, we're going to have an executive session, but first, uh, with the council's indulgence, I'd like to do item number four, which is an update on Muscular Dystrophy Association's Fill the Boot campaign from Lieutenant Brent Long and Jim Bustle. Gentlemen. I look more familiar in this, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Well, good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Thank you. Um, just want to tell you that this week we are kicking off with uh, Rapid City Fire Department, International Association of Firefighters, and uh, MDA. Excuse me. Uh, we're kicking off our Fill the Boot campaign. Starting Wednesday, uh, we'll be in numerous locations throughout town. Uh, look for us at uh, you know Bacon Park, Safeway, uh, both WalMarts this year. Uh, let's see, we'll be at Rushmore Crossing, Black Hills Community Bank, and Family Thrift Center. And we'll be out collecting donations for families uh, in, in, our, in our area and throughout our state who are affected by this uh, devastating to, to, uh, con condition. Uh, Rapid City as a community over the last few years, five years, has raised over $160,000. Pretty impressive. Um, we're averaging $32,000 a year, and each time we uh, go out and do this, we beat Sioux Falls by considerable amount of money. You know, they're a bigger city, they got more firefighters, but Rapid City always steps up and, and does a great job. So look for us uh, Wednesday through Friday from 7.30 in the morning till about 6 in the evening. Uh, we'll be out filling the boot, and I'd like to personally invite you to tomorrow's Fill the Boot campaign kickoff, 2 o'clock down at Main Street Square. Uh, it's going to be a great time. We're going to have the uh, representative from the state, MDA, will be there, and we're even going to have a couple of families from our area who uh, benefit from this campaign. So. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you out there. Show up sometime this week if you're in the area, and uh, we'll even put a jacket on, and you guys can hold the boot for a while. So. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. Do we have a motion to acknowledge the report on item four? Acknowledge and say that Robert just borrowed 20 bucks from me. We have, we have a motion by Nordstrom and a, and a second by Chad Lewis. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. We have a motion to go into executive session. We have a motion by Doyle and a second by Peterson. Peterson to go into executive session. Joel, can you state the reason, please? Yes, Mayor. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss personnel matters pursuant to STCL 1 25 subsection 1. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
Do we have a motion to come out of executive session? Second. Motion by Doyle, second by Peterson. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are now in general public comment. This is the time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at the meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by a unanimous vote of the council members present. It looks like I have several, a couple of speaker request forms. We'll first go to Ian Roberson. You could state your name for the record. My name is Ian Roberson. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> My name is Ian Roberson. I live in Rapid City's Ward 1. I'm here tonight to talk about racism and Alderman Bill Clayton, but certainly not in the same sentence. There are people in Rapid City who would stoop to innuendo, propaganda, and even lies and attempted to deframe Councilman Clayton. Unlike most people in this room, I have known Bill Clayton for close to four and a half years. We met in the workplace. where We have worked together for almost four years. We have, we have completed numerous handyman projects, hunted, fished, kayaked, camped, and even four-wheeled together. We have attended combat shooters courses together and shot competitively, competitively against each other. We have dined together and shared intimate details about each other's lives. I know Bill Clayton better than anyone here or in the community who would try to cast asper aspersions upon him. Bill, Clay Bill Clayton, has always been a trusted friend and mentor to me. My recent promotion was due at least in part to his unceasing encouragement and support. I have always trusted him for no, for no nonsense advice, and he has always been a great sounding board and intent listener. Certainly, his direct nature irritates weak people who would rather have candy coating instead of the truth. <clears throat> I am well aware of the comments made by the KOTO KOTA reporter. We have discussed it many times. What the public seems unwilling to grasp, even after all of Bill's words were, were printed in Rapid City Journal, is that there were no racist, there was no racist content in his comments. Bill has never wavered in his accounts of the conversation. The same cannot be said for the KOTO, KOTA reporter. For those who have taken the time to read the investigation report prepared by City Attorney Joel Landine, this fact is well documented on black and white, in black and white. Excuse me. The current recall effort is based purely on lies being spread by, des by desperate signature seekers being paid for their efforts in spite of the truth that has been made readily available to the public. I have been approached and, and hassled by these people who really have no idea what they are doing or even why. I leave you with this. There are few people in this world I would trust with my life. Bill Clayton is one of them. I can always count on him to have my back. I am proud to call him my friend. Is he direct? Yes. Does he challenge people's thought processes? Absolutely. Is he a racist? Not in your wildest dreams. As a black man, I think it is reasonable to claim that I would recognize any notions of racism if they existed, and it does not. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we do have another speaker request form. And before we go to that, I just want to uh, remind everyone uh, a recall is like an election, and it's a, it's a process that belongs to the people and the merits of the recall, in my opinion, and the council can disagree with me, shouldn't be discussed in council chambers. It belongs to the people. You're certainly welcome to uh, dis discuss uh, Mr. Clayton, discuss uh, other matters, but when it comes to the matter of an election, generally, we have not allowed uh, campaigning uh, from, from the microphone. So most of your comments, sir, were, were just fine, but regarding the uh, discussion of of the recall and the merits of it uh, that debate does not belong in the in the council chambers and if any council member disagrees with me me on that please speak up now we're in somewhat uncharted territory but in general uh, 
we, we, we don't typically debate elections in, the count, in a council meeting. So with that being said, we'll go to Tim Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I guess that takes out one page of what I'm going to say. I was going to talk about the recall, but that's all right. I'm Tim Goodwin, Lieutenant Colonel, of the United States Army, retired. Like each of you, I took an oath long ago to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It is an oath I took very seriously then and still adhere to today. Many of you seated on the dais lay always fail to recognize the significance of your oath of office. If you recall, the investigation into Councilman Clayton's conduct centered on a complaint filed by P. Warnicke, Janet Smith, and Bonnie Redden, alleging Mr. Clayton had violated the code of contact with comments made about Charity Doyle. I was there at the meeting where Mr. Clayton allegedly made those comments. Very simply, it did not happen. The accusations were patently false and were quickly dropped, for sure allegations instead that he made racial comments about a KOTA reporter. Was anything done to those who slandered Bill Clayton with these lies? The answer is no. I also attended the special council meeting on December 20th, 2012, after Bill Clayton gave testimony in an executive session that resulted in a unanimous decision, quote, due process was followed, no further action necessary. I say that again, due process was followed, no further action necessary, unanimous. Then four of you violated your own vow of silence in the code of conduct to go to the journal with half-truths to breathe life into a story about racial comments you knew to be false. Some of you have now taken to the streets to help gather signatures instead of letting the city you are sworn to serve get back to business and to heal, you are guilty of fanning the flames of racism in Rapid City. Many of us know what this is really about. It started at a public works meeting in what should be called Landfill Gate. Since then, there has been a monumental effort to silence Bill Clayton. In my military career, I was and served with the toughest warriors this world has ever known. I tease Bill that the Air Force doesn't major up. But think about it. Some of you, with the cooperation of the Rapid City Journal, and other silent partners have dogged Bill Clayton for eight long months in an effort to silence him. I'm amazed at his strength and his tenacity. You obviously didn't realize that he is tougher than any of you thought. In the end, Bill Clayton will be vindicated. Thank you very much. We do not have any further public, uh, general public comment items. We will now move on to items Five through 53 for public comment. We have a motion to open public comment, please. Motion by Doyle, second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. I do not have any speaker request forms for items five through 53. Five through 53, am I missing anyone? Do we have a motion to close? Second. Motion by Lewis, uh, second by Doyle to close public comment on five through 53. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are now on consent items five through 53. And council members, please hit your lights if you'd like to remove an item. Chad Lewis. Item number 53, please. Item 53, charity. Okay. Steve Laurenti. Hey, do we have a motion to approve items five through 53? Second. Steve, items six and seven are simply to set for hearing. Okay. We have a motion to approve the balance of consent with the exceptions of six, seven, and 53. Motion by Lewis, second by Doyle. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item six, Amanda. A request by Dream Design International Incorporated for Dennis Zanstra Real Estate Holdings LLC for a re resolution creating tax increment district number 74, 
property, generally described as being located south and west of Elks Country Estate, north and south of Elk Vale Road, and east of South Dakota Highway 79. I make a motion to approve. This is to set the hearing for June 3rd, 2013. Second. Okay, this is a motion by Scott and a second by Peterson to simply set this for hearing for June 3. This is not an approval. Is that correct? Okay. Any discussion? Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do clearly understand that these are being just set for hearing, but I wanted to speak now because I'm going to take the opportunity every step in the process. And I just want the citizens to know and my colleagues to know that we all know what we're looking at here is uh, tax increment financing district number 74, and we've been doing these since 1983. And I think the citizens should be asking hard questions, and I think a lot of them are, besides council people. But one of the hard questions is, how many TIFs will we do? How many private developers will we choose to approve TIFs for and others where we have not approved because there are TIFs that we have not approved for certain developers and so one of the things that I wanted to state is that some of the biggest sales points that the proponents of TIFs always say is that these developments would have never happened without the TIF and so I guess you could it would probably be very hard pressed to find a developer who would admit to the fact that that development probably would have happened without it because then they would be basically shutting out a favor for themselves. So I don't think we're ever going to find a developer that's going to say, oh yeah, we could have done that without the TIF. And I'm very hard pressed to believe that our government and any government uh, group that does TIFs, California being the pioneer of TIFs, has done every development without mistake. That every development that a TIF was applied and approved and processed there was never a mistake. I don't think any of us believe that, especially where government is concerned that there wasn't a mistake made. And so, Steve, one of the other, one last thing, Mr. Mayor, if you will. One of the other selling points is that the TIFs are tax revenue that we would have never had, obviously, because the development wouldn't have happened without the TIF. But at the same time, those proponents, the ones who vote for the TIFs, are also the ones who are pursuing tax increases. How can that be? Because the TIFs create millions of dollars of new revenue we never would have had without the TIF. And so I would love my colleagues Steve. to think about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, items six and seven are to set for hearing. I know you have, uh, I never would have guessed it, but I know you have concerns regarding this item. I know the TIF committee has concerns regarding this. I know that there's a couple of county commissioners that have concerns regarding this. There's some staff members that have concerns. I have concerns, but we have a responsibility to vet and provide a proper hearing, and this is not the time and place to debate the merits of items uh, six and seven. This is the time and the place to set a hearing in which the merits will be debated. Understood. Okay. So I apologize for not gaveling you down sooner. Jerry Wright. Well, I have to ask a question. As I understand the TIF, this will be for oversized and public work, public type improvements that we have to pay another way. Is that correct? Is that what this TIF is for? Can we please discuss that at the hearing? All right, I'll hearing. withdraw my question. I just think we're getting <laughs> facts need to be. Thank you, Chad Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just because he started, I have to say one thing, and that is. Until you're actually trying to get a bank loan and get a development loan these days and this financing market, the way the economy is, um, anything the government can do to make sure that happens, I think it's something we should do. And this uh, TIFs are not evil. They just allow government to uh, or allow developers to move forward with larger projects. So otherwise you get postage stamp development and things like that and projects that would never go through. So it just helps secure the financing. It's not a big giveaway anyway. I could argue about it all day long. I'm not going to get into it. Before we go to the rest of the council lights, I'm going to recognize Jamie Carpenter. Jamie, I misread your form, and it looked like item 67, but it's item 6 and 7, so you now have the floor. We'll give you three minutes. It actually is TIF number 67, the Brookfield TIF. It's due to expire at the end of the month. Which item? It's not on your agenda. 
Oh, okay. oh you were trying to talk under. Mr. Mayor, my name is James Carpenter. This is my wife, Jamie. We own a piece of commercial property on Haynes and Country Road. I tell you what, could we come back? To, let's finish this debate, and then we'll come back, and we'll, we'll take this as general public comments, since okay. your comments have nothing to do with items 6 and 7, correct? Okay, Great. very good. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Ron Sasso. Call the question. Question's been called. Are there any objections to calling the question? If there is, we'll ask for a second. And Okay. Do we have a second to Ron's motion to call the question? We have a second by Nordstrom. We're going to vote on calling the question. A yes is to end debate. A no is to keep debating on whether or not to set a hearing. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Question has been called. We will now proceed to the vote on item 6, which is to set hearing for June 3. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries with one no. <laughs> item 7, Amanda. A request to set a hearing for June 3rd, 2013 by Dream Design International Incorporated for Dennis Antra Real Estate Holdings LLC for a tax increment number 74 project plan for property generally described as being located south and west of Elks Country Estate North and south of Elkvale Road and east of South Dakota Highway 79. And I make a motion to approve. Motion by Scott. I'd second like by to retain the floor. By Lewis and you have the floor. Thank you. Um, and this is not necessarily to do with setting the hearing, but I would like to point out that I believe Mr. Lorente missed item number 50, which he approved. So thank you. All in favor of item number seven, please say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries with one no from Steve Lorente. Now we're on to item 53. Oh, wait a minute. It needs to be read into the record. Amanda, if you could read this into the record, item 53. Item number 53 is uh, to recommend denial of the appeal of two digital signs at 1801 Mount Rushmore Road by the Historic Sign Review Committee. The request has been to table this item by applicant. Second. We have a motion by Scott and a second by Peterson to table per the applicant's request. There is no discussion on a tabling motion. All in favor of tabling item 53, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are now on items 54 through, oh, I'm sorry. We now go to Jamie Carpenter. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. My name is James Carpenter. Just take a minute of your time. It's my wife, Jamie. We own a piece of commercial property on the corner of Haynes and Country Road. It already has a TIF on it, which is going to be expiring soon. Jamie has worked diligently trying to get the TIF extended, and we're not getting anywhere with uh, folks up at the uh, city. So what I was hoping to do is see if we could get this um, placed to have it extended through the city council. I'm not sure how that works. Anything else? On this? Brett, would you like to uh, address this? Brett was supposed to call motion. Starts with the Tax Immigrant Financing okay. Committee, correct? Uh, this is the first time I'm aware of this discussion, so I don't have any history on TIF 67. I'll have to uh, uh, get together with staff and get together with uh, these folks here and see if I can bring to you a proposal. Jamie, would you call my office tomorrow or call uh, call Brett? Uh, my office number is 394-4110, and his office, Brett Limbaugh's number is 4120. So call either of our offices, and we'll thank you. Uh, point you in the right direction. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank Joel? I would just say that I doubt extension is really going to work at this point because I'm looking at some of the dates, and I am guessing that this TIF number 67 is more than five years old. And so no more improvements could be built under that TIF, under the current statutes. Okay. Would you, would you mind checking into that and getting back with the carpenters? I, I mean, we could check on the date, but I'm pretty confident that that would really just necessitate the creation of a new tax increment district. Okay. 
Pauline. Thank you, Mayor. According to the tax increment district history online, it has actually expired already. That expired in April of 2013, the five year period in which you can do the improvements. Okay. You're still welcome to call tomorrow and we'll provide additional clarification if, if needed. Any further discussion? Thank you, sir. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Well, oh, we acknowledge the discussion. Oh. Yeah, old habits. All right, we are now on items 54 through 127. We have a motion to open public comment. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Doyle. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We have a couple, we have one speaker request form and that's on item 65. Item 65, and we'll go to Sean McPherson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. I'm just here um, following up from the finance uh, committee that we met with on Wednesday trying to um, get the 2012 tax on uh, 4024 Sheridan Lake Road abated. Our 2013 has already been approved. We didn't own it, the building, uh, during the petition time to get our the building tax abated for 2012. It's been a church uh, since its inception. Uh, and so it's always been a 501c3, never vacant. And so I, and I do understand that it did default and go back to the bank um, as, as Mrs. Doyle was telling me earlier, um, uh, bondholders, uh, bank, whatever. But it's always had, it's never been vacant, it's always had a church in it. Um, it's never been a for-profit building at all. And so with the improvement of the, uh, in, with the approval of the 2013 going forward, uh, I'm asking that the 2012 taxes be abated because $11,500 would uh, cripple our church. Thank you, Pastor Sean. We do not have any further public comment items on items 54 through 127. Did I miss anyone? Okay, we have a motion by Scott and a second by Peterson to close public comment. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now on ordinances. Item 54, Amanda Scott. Second reading, ordinance number 5917, supplemental appropriation number two for 2013. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Peterson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries, 55. Second reading, ordinance number 5930, an ordinance to delegate to the Rapid City Regional Airport Board the power to declare certain property a surplus by amending section 2.72.070 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Peterson. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. 56. Second reading, ordinance number 5931, an ordinance to delegate to the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center Board the power to declare certain property a surplus by amending section 2.76.080 of the Rapid City Code. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Doyle. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That was enthusiastic. <laughs> Go ahead. Second reading, ordinance number 5928, an ordinance to amend the deadline to obtain contractor licenses by amending section 15.04.140 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Doyle. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Second reading, ordinance number 5929, an ordinance to codify the term of office of the mayor's executive assistant by amending section 2.12.070 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Scott, second by Peterson to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries, 59. First reading, ordinance number 5939, an ordinance to change the calculation of the base sewer rate for residential users by amending subsection 13.16.360C of the Rapid City Municipal Code. I make a motion to approve. Motion by Scott, second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First reading, ordinance number 5937, an ordinance of the City of Rapid City to adopt a wayfinding program by amending Title 10 of the Municipal Code. I make a motion to approve. 
Motion by Scott, second by Peterson to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First reading, ordinance number 5924, an ordinance repealing section 17.50.340, gasoline service stations of the Rapid City Municipal Code. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Scott and a second by Roberts to approve item 61. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 62, Jerry Wright. 62 is a request by Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers Incorporated for PLM development for preliminary subdivision plan for property gen generally described as being located at the current terminus of Conestoga Court. Make a recommendation approval. Second. Are, are there stipulations? With motion, stipulations. Motion by Wright and second by Roberts to approve with stipulations. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. 63, Amanda. Preliminary approval of the 2013 to 2017 consolidated plan and the fiscal year 2013 annual action plan. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Scott and a second by Lewis. Any discussion? Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. If I have, can uh, address a couple of questions to Barb Garcia, please. Barbara, I want to thank you, first of all, for how your tremendous amount of time that you had to spend putting this annual report together. I haven't had a chance to read every page on here, but a couple of items come back repeatedly, and that is to do with um, sidewalks, utility lines, substandard housing, vacant properties. Have you got some suggestions for a plan of action that we can do, or should we send this to, back to staff for some kind of incorporations of planning that we should uh, take a look at? Well, that's really up to council um, to direct, and, um, and it will depend on the amount of funding that we have available. Uh, block grant funds can be used for some of it. Um, other things it's not eligible for, like sidewalks. Um, I can only use the funding for sidewalks if we tear them up because we're replacing the water or sewer line, then we can repair them at that point. So it, it depends on what you want to address over the next five years out of all of the high priority issues that are outlined in there. But if you want to go after substandard housing and sidewalks and water and utility lines, um, as I mentioned at the legal and finance meeting before, um, it would be good to coordinate some of those things. We have a lot of houses in the areas where you want to resurface the roads, and it would make sense to replace the lines that people have now. And we can use CDBG funds as long as we have CDBG funds for that, for the low-income people as an incentive to help them get them changed so that you don't have pipes breaking after you resurface the road and have to go back again. And so that is something that we could look at setting aside the money for, but that's also part of that annual plan. When we decide what we're going to fund each year, um, it really helps if you would come together with an idea and we would then start really funneling the money towards those things that you most want to do rather than just kind of dispersing it to whoever asks for money that year. So, um, this, if I may address the mayor, if, uh, uh, is that uh, Barb has presented several good ideas here uh, that we could take a look at if somehow we could incorporate them. W primarily, Mayor, what I'm concerned about is the, the sidewalks, just ordering in sidewalks. Um, there's, there is going to be and will be a lot of uh, pushback on um, sidewalks when we require the, uh, not only residents but pr uh, commercial uh, facilities to install sidewalks. and. I would like to see if we can't find a better way of doing this rather than the current system that we're doing uh, currently. Uh, and, and the same goes for utility lines. We have uh, situations such as water and sewer lines that are deteriorating into private property. And so my suggestion is on these two items is if we, some way, somehow, we can incorporate that into when a street reconstruction takes place. Uh, so it, it will take participation from CDBG, Barb Garcia's group, and then also uh, the uh, Public Works 
department, and then, um, and then in some cases, I can see the state highway becoming involved in this. Um, and uh, and, and right, right now, we just need to float some, some of these ideas by and see how we can incorporate these into some better planning methods instead of forcing people into installing sidewalks or, or especially in lower, uh, lower income cases where they have a real struggle of uh, installing utility lines, especially when road construction comes through. And then I can talk about substandard housing and vacant properties as well, but I, I don't want to take up too much more time with the um, council, so just some ideas I'd like to try to see if we can work out. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go to our Public Works Director, Terry Waltersdorf. My understanding is that there is a, a fairly high level of coordination with the, the use of, of federal and CDBG funds when it, when it comes to uh, you know, co uh, coordinating uh, existing projects and projects on the CIP plan. I mean, I've seen over the years multiple CIP projects include multiple funding sources. And so uh, are you prepared to address uh, Richie's question or do you need do you need some more time on that? I would probably need a little more time. We we do often get federal funding for different different um, CIP projects that we have. Not very often. I, I don't know that we use CDBG funding for streets, water, or sewer projects, but I'd be more than happy to meet with uh, Alderman Nordstrom and um, make sure I understand the direction he's looking at here. Okay. Bonnie Peterson. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, Mr. Walterstorff, um, I think it might be good for you, uh, you to have a conversation with Barb Garcia on this issue because it sounds like there's maybe disconnects between um, because her money can pay for the sewer but not the sidewalk and if the road construction all is going to be done then it's probably good to take advantage of that so I'm, I'm thinking probably if the two of you could get together I think that's probably where the understanding would come from of what she's so that we can help our citizens and also be more efficient when we go into an area and improve the roads and sidewalks so that would be my suggestion and thank you, Barb, so much for all your work. We know you're given a ton of work and a lot of not knowing what's going to happen in the future. So thanks a lot for your work. Thank you, Bonnie. We'll go to Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Barb, just for clarification purposes, this is a preliminary report coming out. It now has a 30-day waiting period for public comment. Is that correct? Correct. And then you'll be coming back with a final plan or final recommendation? What I will be doing is coming back with any comments that we receive, um, any that you would want, or if I am missing some high priority issue uh, that you want included in the plan, you'd need to let me know, and then that would be brought back to the council to vote on as an amendment to it. And then we send it into HUD. This plan, it's a five year plan, but it can be amended at any time in the five years as something new comes up. It's not written in stone, but it's our guide. But what HUD requires is that any project that CBG dollars be used on has to be a high priority issue in the plan. So if it's something that we want to do and it's not in here, then we need to get it in either through an amendment or in this 30-day comment period so we have it right from the start. And then also for clarification, on the CG, CDGB funds, these funds can be used for um, our, some of our citizens who qualify as low income or in certain um, low income areas. In other words, your CGGB funds can't be used to, to, to help supplement a sewer project or um, a water main project per se. It's more in the, along the lines of getting the citizen or the homeowner connected to the main line. Am it I understanding that correctly? Okay. It could be both. Um, if they were doing a water or sewer line in Census Tract 1, 102, 3, 4, or 5, those are low-income census tracts, and so it's presumed that at least half of the people are low-income. 
then I could use it on any part of that sewer line. Now, mind you, we don't have a, a lot, <laughs> and his numbers are in the millions, mine are in the hundred thousands, um, but it could be used on any part of it in a low-income census tract, or it can benefit specifically a low-income person. But the guideline is it must benefit low-income people. And then primarily what you're looking, as um, Alderman Nordstrom brought up, you're looking for guidance from the council as far as what we would consider or to make sure in your plan that you've got all of the high priority items in case we're missing any or any of them that we can think of. Correct. And what we did throughout um, this, this year is that I attend just about every meeting I can possibly fit into my schedule to hear what people are talking about are the high priority issues. And then um, in the last couple of months, I have invited uh, the public as well as nonprofits and professionals and anybody who's in any of the fields that have to affect low-income people to come and comment about what they see as high-priority needs. And I've included all of those uh, that are relevant and that I can justify under HUD's guidelines into those uh, priorities. But many people don't show up at the public comment periods. Um, that's why I started going to their meetings, so I could hear them in the discussions. But the problem is it's very hard to get the people in to even give us the information of what their high priority needs are. So, All right. Well, Barb, thank you for all of your work on this. I know that you've you. got all of our citizens at your heart, and you're doing the best you can to help out our citizenry. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any further discussion on the motion on item 63? The motion is for approval. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 64, Amanda. Uh, this is an item brought forward by Alderman Chad Lewis. Discussion on public expectations and customer service. I yield the floor. I'd like to make a motion to continue this item until June 15th, legal and finance. Second. We have a motion by Lewis, second by Roberts to continue this back to the June 15 legal and finance. Yeah, no further discussion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 65, Amanda. Request for property tax abatement for Real Life Church 2012 for $11,358.16. And I yield the floor. We have a motion by Wright and a second by Laurenti for approval of the abatement. Approval of the debate. Uh, approval of the abatement. And now we will debate the abatement. Go to Chad Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But, uh, sir, can I have a question for you real quick? I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. McPherson? Sean McPherson. Sean McPherson, okay. Yes. Pastor McPherson, I suppose? Sure. Okay. So a quick question for you. When you purchased the property, who did you purchase from, the bank? Um, yeah. We purchased it from bondholders in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, Westgate Baptist Church was the... Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First, first West, West Side Baptist Church was the, uh, the owner on record okay. uh, of that. And was, it, was there anything mentioned in the purchase agreement that you your knowledge of anything about a tax, paying back taxes or anything like that, or should it have been mm -hmm. escrowed at that point? Do you I'd know? have to look through. I don't think so. Uh -uh. Okay. I guess that's my only real question. As I said before, legal and finance, I just want people to understand when I'm voting to approve this abatement, I'm voting because it was never money that the taxpayers have otherwise would have gotten anyway. This has always been a church, and so it's not like we're taking anything away from anybody at this point. These is just something that kind of slipped through the cracks, it looks like, at this point. And I certainly don't want to hamstring a, an organization that's doing its best to uh, serve our community, serve some of the underserved, underprivileged people in it as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. And now we'll go to Amanda Scott. Amanda. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just for clarification, may I ask... Um, Pauline Sumption, a question for Claire. Pauline. As the city council is getting ready to make their decision regarding this, and uh, the clarification is, is that this is only for the 2012 taxes, which 2012 is the only year in which taxes were ever assessed because it was in being held by a non-church for a short period of time due to whatever reasons. But the clarifying point I want to make is that even though the city council were to approve, it actually goes on to the equalization board or the assessment board and it could be overturned. I just want everyone to understand what the process is going to be here. Right. I actually sent an email to the county requ uh, requesting that information and, and Shannon said that 
this is a decision by the council. However, the commissioners will look at it also and can overturn it, just like the assessment hearings for equalization. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. We'll go to Ron Sasso. Ron. Thank you, Mayor. And I also support uh, this abatement. I think looking at the uh, the history of the property, and, and uh, I would agree with uh, Alderman Lewis on this point that uh, this is a property that other than when I guess either in foreclosure uh, or uh, being held by the bank uh, has always been uh, nonprofit status. The county uh, has not received any taxes as nonprofits typically do not, at least that we know of. And uh, so uh, I believe that it's worth uh, abating and I guess we'll see where it goes from here. So thank you. Thank you, Ron. We'll go to Steve Laurenti. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just wanted to speak in support. Obviously, this was a, a motion that I made at the legal and finance meeting to approve it. But I have served on a parish council and as the president of a parish council. And I can attest to the fact that every dollar is extremely important to a parish. And I'm hoping that my colleagues will so, uh, support uh, this effort to abate the taxes. Thank you. I'll go to Amanda. You've spoken on this side. We'll go to Chad Lewis. I just want to point out this is not a TIF, so you can vote for it. <laughs> Amanda Scott. And thank you, Mayor. I just want to call the question. Any objections to calling the question? Okay. We will proceed with the vote. The motion is to approve the property tax abatement to Real Life Church uh, for $11,358.16, and this would be an actu actually a recommendation to County Board. It's not a recommendation. It's, not a it's recommend actual action taken. That was made clear by Shannon in the email returned back to me. Okay, so they can overturn it, mm -hmm. but it's not going it's to a county commission meeting to be. It is heard. going to the county commissioners, I believe, but it's not a recommendation from this board. It is actually action taken by the board or okay. by the council. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Bids. We only have one bid for you tonight, and that is for the Haynes Avenue and North Street Joint Ceiling and Panel Repair Project. We received three bids on this, and the recommendation is to award to J Stanley Johnson Concrete Contractor, Inc., in the amount of $387,061. Motion by Robert, second by Doyle, uh, to approve uh, item 66. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on item 67 through 126. I'd like a motion for all of these items. We have a motion by Doyle and a, and a second by Amanda Scott. Uh, Chief, do you have any concern on any of these items? 67 through 126. Chief Allender? 67 through 126. Do you have concerns on any of the wine or alcohol licenses? Pauline, any concerns? No. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 127, this is Pauline's item, uh, fiscal year 2012 annual report update. Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mayor. The new financials are attached to the agenda. Charlene did that earlier this afternoon. As I stated in agenda review, there are still a couple adjustments that I, I know I need to, be, to make. One is for depreciation expense, and the other is for disposal and transfer of any fixed assets. Uh, at I would take any questions that you would have. However, please know that the auditors are coming in towards the end of the month, and they'll be here for about three weeks in June to go through these numbers. If there are adjustments to those numbers, I'm hoping they are minor, and uh, um, you'll get a final report once the audit is complete, either in August or September. And so your, recommend, your recommendation at this point is for what action? Just to acknowledge. Okay. We have a motion by Roberts and a second by Lewis to acknowledge item 127. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We have a motion to open public hearing on. Uh, we have a motion by Doyle and a second by Scott to open public hearing comments on items 20, 128 through 130. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, we do not have any speaker request forms. Did I miss anyone? Okay. We have a motion to close by Lewis, second by Roberts. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Items uh, 128, uh, can we
we have a motion to approve both of those? Okay, we have a motion by Nordstrom and a second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are now in item uh, 100, 130. Amanda, can you read this in the record for us? Second reading, ordinance number 5926, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, rezoning the within described property as requested by Bradley H. Estes for M. Hill Business Plaza, LLC, for a rezoning from light industrial district to general commercial district for property generally described as being located at 1401 West Omaha Street. I make a motion to approve. Second. A motion by Amanda Scott, second by Bonnie Peterson. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 131, bill list, Pauline. There are no additions to the bill list, so the total is that is that which is before you at $6,981,801.83. We have a motion by Nordstrom, second by Scott to approve, and we'll go to Steve Laurenti. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I uh, spoke with the city attorney just briefly, and this is unrelated to this item, but, and I wanted to thank uh, Alderwoman Scott for bringing up item 50 for me, and I just wanted to publicly state my opposition to item 50, but I think we're gonna look at whether I had voted against that at the legal and finance meeting, or if it was even on the agenda. And, uh, but I just wanted to publicly state my opposition to item 50. Thank you. All in favor of the bill list? Uh, I'm, Bonnie, oh, you guys want to say anything? Yeah, I want to say something. I just wanted to tell Mr. Laurenti that he's got to stop picking winners and losers and that I find it interesting that TIF number 69 was approved by you. Okay. All in favor of the bill list, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion to adjourn. So we have a motion by Doyle and a second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries, and it's 820 and we're adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.